So today we're going to talk about uh, seven Facebook tips for Rice Street Community Gardens. Okay, and I'm just going to expand this. Let's see here. View slideshow. Here we go. Great. Okay. So today we're going to talk about uh, seven Facebook tips for Rice Street Community Garden. All right. And uh, what I did was I posted an update on my Facebook page last week and I said, hey, who wants a Facebook page review? I went through and I randomly selected someone. Right. So I do that occasionally. And Rice Street Community Garden was chosen. And what I like about these guys is that they are just starting out. They have a Facebook page. They had 19 fans when they said, hey, can you review our Facebook page? So right away I say, OK, they need to get more Facebook fans. So that's going to be part of this whole discussion. Uh, so the first tip is, and by the way, Rice Street Community Gardens, they are a community garden associated with an Episcopal church in Northern Carolina. I don't know this, I forget the city, but they're a small community garden. They're associated with an Episcopal church. And the church actually has a Facebook page with about four or 500 Facebook fans. So these guys are trying to create a new Facebook page for this community garden. Community garden is really great because they have a ton of volunteers that are also probably church members. And what they do is the food is they give the food to a local shelter. Okay, so this is really good work that they're doing. And obviously they're a pretty uh, powerful story to tell, tell their local community. Okay, so the few tips that I have is the first one would be change the profile picture in the cover. All right. Now, the profile picture we see here in green, it has some small text. And I love what it says here. It says the best place to I can't even read it. Oh, the best place to find God is in a garden. You can dig for him there. All right. Now, religion aside, I kind of like where they're going with this. All right. It's a great quote. It's awesome. Probably speaks directly to the community and to the you know church members, right? So change the profile picture. Why should they change this profile picture? The reason why is because this profile picture, it's about 180 pixels square, okay? But most of the action will happen in the newsfeed, right? So most people that interact with their Facebook page, they're gonna do so in their own personal newsfeed on Facebook where that profile picture will get as small as 32 pixels. So these words won't even be seen. They might as well put a green box there with nothing in it, okay? So I made a few changes here. I used Canva and I created a simple profile picture. I put a tomato on there. I don't know a lot about the organization, uh, but I felt a tomato is probably a safe bet. It's reflecting kind of somewhat of some of the personality of the, of the garden. And obviously, tomatoes are grown in gardens, right? So I thought that might be a good safe bet for a profile picture. And I also updated the cover image. Took It literally took less than five minutes with Canva. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing is the organization wants to let people post pictures. And why is that? This is a garden, all right? People that go and volunteer for this community garden, they probably love healthy food. They probably love gardening. They might even have their own gardens at home, right? So we want to allow the community to post pictures to the Facebook page. And the reason why is because when they do so, their friends are exposed to the organization. Uh, this organ uh, Rice uh, Street Community Garden, they had this deselected. It was deselected. So basically they were saying, probably unknowingly, we don't want people to post photos on our Facebook page, right? And by the way, Deb, if you're listening, um, <clears throat> when people do post photos to your Facebook page, your fans won't see them, okay? Your fans won't really see those photos. The people that see those photos are friends, are the friends of the person who's posting the picture, okay? So to me, this is a no-brainer, right? Allow people to post photos and videos, yes, definitely select this. Facebook also has another setting within uh, this feature, and this is under settings, general, the general tab on your Facebook page, and you wanna look at posting ability. This is posting ability. There's a new feature that allows you to review posts by other people before they're shown on the page. That way you get to see, oh, okay, well, this is, a, this is appropriate, this is not appropriate, and so forth. And that, by the way, speaks to what's your policy. You know, what is the strategy with the page and what is appropriate and what isn't appropriate, all right? Um, so that's number two. Number three, create fan photo albums. Now, this is not Rice Street Community Garden's uh, Facebook page. This is actually a local 
community farm in Needham, Massachusetts. I live in Massachusetts and this is Needham Community Farms. And what they do is they post, they have a whole photo album of volunteers. They focus on farm volunteers and they post pictures of farm volunteers. Okay, so I would highly recommend that. Create different fo different albums within the Facebook page that you're uh, posting volunteer pictures, recipes, uh, posts by others. If someone has a funny looking vegetable that they're growing in their backyard and it's a, it's a cucumber, but it kind of looks like Snoopy in some weird way, yeah, post that picture. On, on the Facebook page and share it with the fans. But you definitely, you know, A, you want to let fans post to the page. B, you want to start creating uh, fan photo albums, okay? Uh, so fan photo albums, farm volunteers, recipes, funny looking vegetables, um, vegetable growing tips, um, award winning vegetables, and so forth, whatever might be appropriate to the community, okay? Number four, uh, I would recommend posting healthy recipes and gardening tips. So people that participate in community gardens, I've got to imagine that they're interested in, re in eating local food that's healthy. And many of them, uh, either <clears throat> if they don't have their own personal garden behind their house, they probably participate in a community garden like the one that we're talking about today. So fan recipes, cooking tips, fan meals, fan gardens. The idea here is that you don't want to, and when I say you, I mean uh, anybody who's kind of administering a Facebook page, anybody who's managing a Facebook page, you shouldn't ever feel like, oh, my job, I'm responsible for content and it's all on me and I have to create things and come up with fresh ideas every single day and somehow satisfy the masses. That's setting yourself up for failure. It's better to create a situation where you are soliciting input from the community. Hey, we want to see your recipes. Who got, who has a great recipe for tomatoes? We have tomatoes in the, in our garden and they're pretty much ripe. Who's got a great recipe? What do you do when you grow tomatoes in your backyard? Right. Uh, fan cooking tips, fan meals, fan gardens. So a lot of pictures from fans. And this isn't to say that you shouldn't post your own recipes, your own cooking tips, meals and, and uh, gardens, pictures, different pictures within the garden. Uh, but it's saying that if you include the community, they're much more committed to the process. They're much more committed to the organization. OK, uh, number five, I asked Deb by email, I said, Deb, do you guys have an email list? And Deb said, yes, we have an email list. And I said, great. Uh, so tip number five is promoting your list with an uh, email list. Uh, I'm sorry, promoting your page with an email list, right? So uh, before you do this, you want to make sure that you're doing steps one through four and have a good idea of what's going to work and what's not going to work on the page. You know, basically put really great content on the page first, like we've already discussed. Okay. Then you can send out an email that says, hey, if you haven't checked out our Facebook page, check it out. Why? Why would you want to check it out? Well, it has all this really great stuff and it's all about you. It's not about us. It's not about our organization and us talking about our events and how great we are. It's really about you because the reason why it's about you is because we share similar interests. You know, our community garden, we're just a member of the community. It's a community of people who are passionate about local food and gardening and eating healthy right? Whatever those topics might be. Okay. Uh, number, number five, uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah. Number five, promote your page with your email list. Uh, and <laughs> this should have been number six, but it's number five, uh, share your best posts on the church page. So again, this community garden is associated with a Facebook page in a, uh, St. Philip's Episcopal church in North Carolina. And this page has about four or 500 fans. Okay, so that is free exposure for the community garden. What these guys want to do is they want to go to their Facebook page, pick a high performing post and share it with the church. Okay, Ch share it with the church fans. And you simply go to your page, Rice Street Community Garden, uh, click on, you know, a high performing post. You're actually going to click on share. And when the share box, when the share window pops up, like it is here, the default setting is on your own timeline. You don't want to pick that because that's going to be sharing the post with your Facebook friends. Okay. What you want to do is you want to pick on a page you manage and then select the church. And Deb, uh, just so you know, you have to be an admin of the church page in order to do this. Okay. So this is free exposure for 
your posts on the community page, uh, the community garden page, uh, Facebook page. Okay. And again, I'm going to stress only share the best posts. Don't just share something because you think it needs to get shared. Share stuff that's getting lots of likes, comments, and shares. Okay. Uh, number six, boost your best posts. All right. So this organization, they're brand new. They had nine, actually, I think it was 19 fans when they, when I saw their Facebook page, I think they have 29. They might have 30. If you have 30 Facebook fans, that means that you can now access Facebook insights for the page. And of course, Facebook insights is the analytics module for all Facebook pages that will show you what your best content is. So you always want to be focusing on your best content and give your best content more exposure. More exposure means more engagement. More engagement means more fans. Okay. Uh, so what they would do, this is a screenshot here of their page, and I picked a post on their page, and I clicked boost, and there's an audience. So I edited the audience. I said create audience when I went to boost a post. And who do I want to target? I want to target people in Brevard, uh, Brevard, or Brevard uh, North Carolina. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, the age range, I took a guess here because they don't have Facebook insights yet, but you always want to use your insights when you're looking for the best uh, um, demographic information, right? So within Facebook insights, there's a report that says people. You want to click on people and the best report within people, there's a sub report called people engaged, right? People engaged. Those are the people you care about. You really don't care about people reached or people who like your page. You care about people engaged because that's really the gold in the long run. You want to reach people that are liking, commenting, and sharing your posts. Further, uh, you can add interests. So what they want to do is they want to type in interests that are related to their community. I threw in there Episcopal Church, gardening, sustainability, feeding America as a few examples. Again, they can use either Facebook graph and I'm happy to show you guys Facebook graph and how to use that as a research tool for interests after we're done when we open it up for Q&A, if someone wants to see that. Uh, so you basically boost your best post, but focus on smart targeting. You don't wanna just boost it to anyone in the city or anyone in North Carolina, because that will be a low quality fan base and you will increase the likelihood that people will mark your posts as spam as unwanted, they're gonna hide your posts and so forth. Okay, so be very careful and target very specifically around your, your community, around your location, around interest, gender, and age, okay? Uh, number seven, this is the last tip, use signage and humor, all right? And I found this on the internet, I Googled and looked for a Facebook sign and I found this, I thought it was pretty funny. I don't mean to offend anybody, but I thought it was brilliant, uh, to be honest with you. And I'm sure Deb isn't offended, I think, Deb is probably laughing right now. Uh, and so what do I mean by this? I, I don't mean, you know, use a sign like this. I'm not saying this is the sign you should use. I'm saying that use signage, use signage. They, they are associated with the church. People go to church every Sunday. There are meetings at the church all the time. There should be signage all throughout the church, posters, colorful posters that are attractive and are engaging and talk about the benefits of liking the page. Don't miss out. We have fan photos. We have great recipes. We have uh, you know all these different things on our Facebook page. Make sure you go and like our Facebook page. Here's the URL. Here's the URL. You can go connect with us on Facebook there. Okay, so now I'm going to open it up for Q&A and I'm going to try and uh, unmute Deb. If you do have a question, by the way, type it into the questions box. I'm not going to unmute anyone, everyone. I'm going to just unmute Deb if I can find her. Let me just see. Here is Deb right here. Deb, can you hear? Oh, oh that's Colleen. Sorry, Colleen. I'm going to mute you again. And Deb, let's see if we can get Deb here. Deb? Yeah, I've got oh. you now on the telephone. Oh, can you hear you? Great. Your phone is working. Yes. Did, excellent. So do you, do you have any uh, initial questions right away or? No, those are, those are all really great comments. Um, you know, I just like, right, great refining. And then, uh, 
I just added an event that we're going to be doing on November 1st. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to do that, I added that this morning. So if you have any suggestions on the event, that would be great. Oh, yeah. Okay. So an event. Um, here's the great thing. Um, so I'm glad that you did that, Deb. This is really great. And by the way, ugh, you still have 29 likes. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, they need one more fan to actually have insights. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to share the link in the chat box. So if someone or maybe a couple of people can just go quickly like this page, that way they can have access to the insights and they can start using, you know, viewing the analytics on the page. Um, in terms of the event, <clears throat> um, don't think, Deb, in terms of, and this applies to everybody, don't think, oh, let's just post uh, information about our event and then have a link to our, you know, the registration page or something like that. Okay. This is actually 58 minutes ago. Is this the post right here? Oh, yeah. Create an event. Beautiful. You created an event. And... And the event looks brilliant. Okay, a um, <clears throat> couple things about the event. If you're going to promote this event with email, make sure that um, after people register for the event or sign up, that you're um, following up and redirecting them to the Facebook event so that they can RSVP. Okay, so someone receives an email to register for the event. Oh, this is great! I'm going to sign up, or they receive information about the event. Um, you also want to email your people and say, you know, RSVP here if you're, if you're going to attend the event. If you don't have a registration page or uh, a registration process, if it's just kind of an informal event and you just want people to come, that, that sort of thing, then just send out an email with a link to the event page, okay, and uh, encourage people to join that way. Now, when you encourage people to join, what happens is that their friends see that action. So if, say, if I click to join, uh, then many of my friends might see, oh, John is attending this event. Oh, that's cool. Okay, well, maybe I should attend that event too. Further, when you get, uh, you know, a certain number of people, and I don't know what that number would be, but let's say that you have, say, 30 people who have um, clicked to join, and they said, yes, I'm going to go to this event. You can then use Facebook ads to push out um, the event to the friends of those people who have joined. Right, so that's another another strategy that you can use. Uh, and the other, the two more things about the event: um, <clears throat> post uh, content about the event, but make that content all about the community, not about the organization, because clearly this is your agenda, right? You know, we have an event; you have to come to the event, and that sort of thing, and that's all fine and good. But generally speaking, Facebook users engage with stuff that's about them because they're always asking, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? And they want to engage with stuff that's interesting. So if you can share maybe behind the scenes photos preparing for the event, maybe somebody's going to be at the event, maybe there's a silent auction at the event. You can post pictures of some of those items that will be at the event. So you can you can probably post five to seven, maybe uh, this is November 1st. So, you know, you could probably post five to seven different posts. Mostly I would I would um, recommend pictures, you know, posting pictures that are related to the event. And, you know, don't forget to link back to the event in that in that update. OK, but beautiful job so far. I'm telling you, it's a really great job. And we have insights. Yay. Look, somebody liked your page. Brilliant. Now you have Facebook insights. We have 36 fans. Okay, so 36 fans on the page. Chances are, you know, they're not really living near you. So, you know, there's that. But at least you have insights. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to. Uh, so, Deb, any other comments or questions? Uh, no, that was the main one uh, on on the event. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, it's but great. All, all, good, all good suggestions. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm glad. And I uh, I will upload the slides to SlideShare, and I'll send you an email um, immediately after. And then I'll this will this is currently being recorded, so that'll be uploaded. And I'll send everybody an email on Monday. Everybody who participated. Uh, so let me just go over some of the other questions. Uh, Mariana says or as asking, how do I convince them to uh, contribute to an email list? Huh, let me see. How do I convince them to contribute to an email list? What would be a great catch for my page being a marketing consultant? I'm not sure if I understand that question. Um, so I don't know who them is and contributing. I'm not sure. What the, Marianne, if you could ask that question maybe in a different way, that'd be great. Uh, oh, and Marina, 
it has another question. Uh, what is the best software to manage my social media? And Deb, I'm just going to mute you if that's okay, so that there's no feedback. It's not personal. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so what's the best tool? I, you know, for Facebook, I would say use your Facebook page if you are managing one Facebook page. If you're managing multiple Facebook pages or you have multiple people managing one Facebook page, I recommend a tool called Post Planner. Uh, for Twitter, there's always Hootsuite. That's a great tool. Twitter has uh, excellent features. Um, uh, so those those would be my two recommendations in terms of uh, tools. And let's see here, uh, Le Lea or Lee. Sorry if I'm not getting it right. Uh, where do you see people engaged on step number six? Okay, so people engaged is actually in insights. Now, unfortunately, on this page is not much because it's a brand new page. But when you go to the people report, there's another report that says people engaged. So I will, for our purposes, I'll go to another Facebook page just to show you a Facebook page that has a little bit of activity. So you go to people, you go to people engaged, and it will show you demographics. So again, uh, this is important information for targeting purposes for Facebook ads, because the question Facebook will ask you when you're creating your Facebook ads are, well, who do you want to target? Men, women, what are the ages? What are the locations? And you can get all this information right in Facebook insights. And the people engaged, that's really what you care about. People that like your page, eh, you know, you could take that with a grain of salt. It depends upon how you've been accumulating fans over time, um, <clears throat> whether the fan quality is good or not. But in the end, and people reached, that's also not really that useful because people that see your post but don't act, you really don't care about those people. You want to reach people that are like the people that are interacting with your posts, right? So this is, in my opinion, the uh, most important demographic, okay? Uh, Laura is asking, boosting your post requires a budget. Yes, it is not free. It does require a budget, but it's super, super cheap. Facebook ads are the cheapest type of advertising that there is really, especially if you're using your, if you're targeting wisely. So you could boost a post for five bucks and test it out. Uh, your money is best used in general is if, if you use the posts report, if you go to the posts report and you only boost your best, right? So that's a, you can make that your mantra, boost your best, boost your best. That way you're not wasting your time boost, boosting a post that's kind of boring and people really didn't like, comment, or share it. And so let's have a thousand some odd people see it. Well, probably the same thing is going to happen. People are going to, you know, fall asleep when they see it. But if you go to insights and you look at engagement rate, right? This is engagement rate within the posts report. Uh, you can look at, um, you can look for the most engaging posts, right? So the higher the percent, basically the best content on your page is always going to have the highest engagement rate, okay? Uh, somebody is probably asking, well, what's a good engagement rate? My answer is always better than your last engagement rate because there's no, every community is unique. Um, you really can't compare, there's no set number for a good engagement rate. And if you read some survey that's published by like say a software company, a Facebook marketing software company, and they say the industry engagement rate for nonprofits is 15% and yours is two, you're gonna feel awful, right? If, the, if it's 50, you might be arrogant and you might feel, oh, we're all set and you're just gonna kind of settle, okay? Uh, what does it cost to boost a post? It really does vary depending upon the number of fans and how many people are gonna be reached, okay? Uh, Deb, let me just see here, Gus, let me see. Oh, a few more questions. So it's now 1130. I'm going to officially end this uh, hump day coffee break. I wanna say thank you to everyone. I'm going to stick around and answer a few questions, no problem at all, but I am going to stop the recording just so that, you know, so that I'm gonna stop the recording and officially conclude the meeting so that everyone can get back to work and do what they need to be doing. And again, thank you very much. Hope to see you next week. Don't forget, if you're not getting the invites, just go ahead and go to johnhayden.com and subscribe. And with that, I will continue. So uh, Deb is saying, my challenge is that we service the developmentally disabled uh, transitioning from psychiatric hospitals who live uh, who have no family or friends. I have, I'm have. i having difficulty expanding the likes on our page. I do have a 
general email list I could try to send out, uh, let me say, oh, um, new and innovative articles in the field, right? So I think, Deborah, in your case, I would recommend going back to what's the um, what's the emotional, um, you know, interest in the cause. Go to people who already support the organization and ask them, you know, you're not related to anybody who's been through this organization because you just told me that most of these people don't have family or friends, right? But yet people support the organization. Why, right? Why do they support? Go back to that. Uh, focus on that. Don't talk about, um, you know, the, uh, I said, you know, innovative articles and in the field and so forth. It's usually more of an emotional reason that's going to get more traction on Facebook. So uh, think in terms of humanistic. Don't think in terms of, you know, innovative ideas and articles that quote unquote people must read. So I would kind of shift the content strategy if you can. Okay. Uh, Leah is saying, after you make an event, can you go back and invite all your likers? Yes, you can, but you have to post the event on your page and you can always share that event on your page and just make sure that people know. So like I said before with Deb, uh, you know, don't just create the event and leave it at that. Post five, seven, 10, who knows? Post a few updates to, to, um, in, to, to, engage your fans, right? Here's a picture. Here's who's speaking at our event. Um, you know, even ask questions. You know, we don't have a, uh, um, a caterer for the event, but we're kind of looking at Mexican or Italian. What do you guys think, right? So your Facebook fan base is a great resource to learn, to get valuable information so that you can create even better events. You can ask them, don't ask them, you know, where should we have our event? Like an open-ended question that is really a decision that should be made by the executive director and executive staff. Um, but ask simple questions that are important to the community, but are certainly doable. You know, give them choices, always choices. Okay. Uh, Mel is uh, saying great info thanks you're very welcome i manage a nonprofit facebook page for nonprofit procurement organization for transplants okay let's see uh, a nonprofit organ procurement organization for transplants we had near we have nearly 30 3000 followers but i'm hitting the ceiling when it comes to breaking out of the choir uh, any tips on how to engage beyond the core group I've boosted videos and key posts with OK results. Growth is already uh, steady but slow. Growth is normally steady but slow. If you've reached 3,000 fans, you are way ahead of the pack. The average Facebook fan base is, is, is less than 200 fans. Okay, so 3,000 fans, you're doing pretty good. I would focus on, I would focus every single effort on engaging as many of those 3,000 people as possible. And through that engagement, they're going to naturally tell their friends about the organization. That's who you care about. You don't care about new people. Don't care about new people. If you have 3,000 fans, you're doing great. Satisfy those fans. Publish content that's really going to get them going and experiment. You know, you always have to have a fresh mind and experiment. Try new things. Look at other pages and how they're um, engaging their fans, you know, similar pages. So, for example, um, I can go and I could type in, um, let me see, pages liked by uh, women who like the Ellie Fund. Okay. Let's see, the Ellie Fund. Okay, the Ellie Fund, here we go. All right, so this is a local breast cancer organization and I could type in, I can use Facebook Graph to do research, right? So this is gonna give me some really great material or some ideas at least to help me break out of whatever rut I'm stuck in with respect to the content, okay? Uh, so Mel has asked that and let's see, Deb, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Videos, Deb is asking about videos, definitely post videos, but keep them really short really short. Make sure the videos have some kind of story in the video. Okay. Um, you know, here's a quick way to peel an onion. Most people don't know how to peel an onion. Here's a quick little trick on peeling an onion that's super quick and easy. Okay. Uh, so, you know, stuff like that might be good. Or, you know, here are the three vegetables you should be planting in the fall. In the springtime, this is what you plant. I'm not a gardener, just to, in full disclosure. Uh, 
what is the difference? Uh, let's see. Uh, Iris is asking, what's the difference between boosting a post and a Facebook ad? Boosting a post is a Facebook ad, but it's a Facebook ad that's very easy to do on your Facebook page. It's, it's, it is a Facebook ad. Okay. Um, let's see. Sam, uh, Sam Rowit is asking, what is your insight on repeating posts? If you have a large following, 25,000, how often should you repeat? How often can you repeat a post? I'm a big fan of repeating posts, but don't do it too soon. Okay. In fact, what you can do is you can go to your Facebook insights and I'll just go to insights and I'll show you a very quick, um, uh, you know, I guess hack, you can call it a hack. You can go to your insights and you could export your post level data, right? Post level data. But what you want to do is you want to pick a date range that say six months ago, a, you know, a four to five month window that's a while ago, maybe even last year. Okay. So September through October, uh, September through, um, let me just see, I'll just do July through October, just as a, you know, for the purpose of time, just to pick a, a, a band of, of time, a couple of months, but from a while ago, export that data, rank it by engagement rate. Okay. So engagement rate is the number of people that saw a post that liked it or, uh, you know, liked, commented, shared it, viewed it, clicked on a photo and so forth. And instantly you'll see your top post when you rank it from high to low based on engagement rate, you're going to see your top posts you can repeat those posts. And I often recommend that as a, as a huge time saver for organizations, because this is content that your Facebook fans have already said that they like. Chances are they're going to like it again, right? Um, obviously, you don't want to repost something that is not news anymore. If it's event related or specific to the time that it was posted, that's not going to, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about posts that are more or less evergreen. You know, it's a topic like how to peel an onion. That's probably going to be relevant, you know. Um, excellent. Uh, so ooh, Deborah is asking, we had just started raising private funds. We have no real individual donors yet. Okay. Uh, Allison, is someone, uh, if someone is a fan, shouldn't I be able to send them a message from your page? No, you cannot send a message to a Facebook user. Facebook pages cannot send messages to uh, people. There is one teeny tiny exception, and that is if you have uh, the message messages feature turned on. So for example, uh, one organization that I love is the Best Friends Animal Society in Utah, and I can send them a private message me, a Facebook user, I can send them a private message. They can't send me a message, but I can send them a message and they can reply up to two times. That's the only instance when a Facebook page can send a private message to a Facebook user. Okay. So that's the last question. I want to say thank you everybody again. You guys are all great. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And we'll talk next, next Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Take care everybody. Bye.